Hello, my name is Rob Reynolds. Welcome to section 5.2, Definite Integrals. We're going to continue our discussions about Riemann sums. We're going to push them to the limit to help us find the exact area. So if you haven't watched section 5.1, I would go back and do that. Let's first of all talk about the difference between net area and absolute area or integration. Net area is the integral from left to right, from A to B. It talks about positive area and negative area. The rule of thumb is if you see this integral sign, uh, then you're always talking net area, unless they ask for absolute area. So I will provide a formula sheet uh, for you on your test so you don't have to memorize um, all of these formulas, but we were working with these um, theorems back in 5.1 as well. I'll continue using these in 5.2, but we're gonna push them to the limit so we can not estimate areas uh, for only six partitions or seven partitions or maybe even 50 partitions and then put it on the calculator. We're going to do infinitely many partitions and push it to infinity uh, or push it to the limit. So here are some definitions that we already knew from section 5.1 and we're going to continue using in 5.2. The nice thing about integration is it works like derivatives where you can pop out the constants. Remember, when you're taking the derivative, a, B, that did not equal, A of B, that did not equal the derivative of A times the derivative of B, which we don't know what that is. Same thing with integ uh, integration. Uh, the, the derivative of A plus B is exactly what you think it is. That's the derivative of A uh, plus the derivative of B. Um, so addition works, but remember, um, so this, this is, works, but remember, uh, the integral of a, b does, just like derivatives, uh, does not equal the integral of a times the integral of b. So don't go down that route. Uh, but there are many properties that do work. For example, if you're going to find the area between a and b, um, uh, or no, you're really going to find a and c from all the way from a over to c, instead of adding uh, all of this in green from A to C, you could add just A to B first and then B to C. That kind of makes sense instead of going the entire direction or, or distance. And if you don't integrate anywhere, then of course that makes sense. It's zero. And this is a neat property that we'll be using. And I'll try to explain a little bit better. But if you uh, are integrating, A should always be on the left, B should be on the right. And for some reason, if you were to find uh, yourself doing the opposite, um, integrating from 7 to 5, which I'll explain why that might happen, uh, then we just simply put it back. Uh, I like the lower uh, number down here. So net area, uh, this example has already worked out for us, but we'll just talk again. Net area talks about positive and negative areas, so this integral sign is always assumed that that means net area. So when you integrate, um, you're actually finding the green area, which is positive, and you're going to add it to some negative and then find the net area, uh, positive and negative. And I think this is the first time you've already actually talked about negative area because in geometry class in 10th grade and high school, there was no such thing as negative area. Um, so uh, if they ask for total area, that's skewing you into, uh, you need to take the absolute value. There is no negative, so think about it, that flipping over and turning into blue, and you can just rectify that by just putting absolute value bars, and just make sure your answers are all, always positive there. So the first example that we're going to talk about is similar to section 5.1, that's why you should watch it. Uh, they give me a function, I believe this is an upside down parabola, you could plot it a little bit more carefully, but I'll just plot it in front there. But in part A, we're going to use the midpoint formula, again, I'll give you cheat sheet. We can pop out uh, delta x, which is, again, the formula sheet will be given, b minus a over n. And it looks like n is 4, and there's my a and my b. So 3 minus 1 over 4 gives me a half. So 1 half, the sum of f of x star. And if you remember, well, we have several definitions of that x star, but we're going to be using the midpoint. So I'm just going to go here. Here's a 1. Here's... 
three would be, I don't know, somewhere over here perhaps, and then this is way down here. So you can see maybe some is positive and some is negative. But if I'm doing midpoint, I've got four sections, and I'm going to do the distance of a half, then I'm going to move from 1 to 1 1.5, and then 1.5 to a 2, and then 2 to a 2.5, and then I think I end up with my 1, 2, 3, 4 partitions. 1, 2, 3, 4 partitions. But I don't want left or right. I want midpoint. And so the midpoint of this guy right in here is going to be half of 1.25. Plus half of And so this is exactly similar to, in fact, this is the exact, I might as well just call this section 5.1. We'll give this a section 5.1. I'm going to kind of do it as quickly as usual for you. So this example, you should already know how to do. Um, finding all those, adding all those, so go to the function, plug that in, and actually evaluate that in the function to get these numbers. Uh, if you can't get the negative signal, but what I want to talk to you about is this was net area. This was it had some positive and it had some negative area. Um, in part B, they say do the same thing, but just use the left. So if you're going to use the left, this time I'm doing the sum of half of on the left would start at, well, this one's at zero, so start at zero, because that's far left, plus, and then I'm using the left, so I'm going to go an increment of a half, so f of one half would be the next delta width x to the right, f of one, f of, and I got six partitions, so oh my gosh, one, two, three, I got to do this until I find six partitions, so f of 1.5, plus f of 2, plus f of 2.5, and then I quit, because I don't want to use the right uh, that asks for a left read on sum. And then go ahead and add that up. Um, again, you're going to end up with some positives. This will be some negatives. And uh, so again, worked out solutions are on uh, Blackboard. Uh, you can pause the video and look at this, but again, these definitions will be given to you for those X stars. Um, you don't have to memorize those. So there's A and B worked out. So this slide, again, is just talking about that net area. So the more partitions, the more accurate we're going to be. So we're going to push N to the limit here. I'll show you an example of that more definitions, which again, I'm giving you a cheat sheet for. So if they say use geometry, remember, it's always positive area. So that's cueing you into, even though they use the integration sign, um, I think we want to demonstrate that we're actually finding the area using some geometry formulas. So again, it's not the answer I'm going after. You need to show me that you, but since they Use the integration sign. I, I really do think they want positive plus negative area, even though they're kind of contradicting themselves by saying use use geometry. So uh, I'll retract my earlier statement. I don't think they mean. Every, let me just show you what the, what the graph looks like. So this is a line. Uh, it starts up at three, rise uh, two, and run one. So oh, and this is. So I would go for f of 2 is here, f of 4 is here, and then down this area. So f of 2 is 7, f of 4 is 11. So the area of that would be 1 half 2. Uh, I'm using this formula right here. Uh, do, do you know what it is for a trapezoid? Oh, I don't like what they did. Um, I would have said the area is uh, 1 half of the base, no, one half of the height of base one plus base two, where the, the bases are always the parallel sides, right? So base one might be here, base two might be here, and it's kind of weird, but I'm going to call this the height, left to right, you know, because that's the base, just lay that thing down. 
um, and we're finding new area. But remember, the bases have to be the parallel side, so that's why. Um, so the height is two. Base one would be the, the seven, which we already found. So two times the seven uh, plus 11. So let's write that a little bit differently. So we can see, uh, seven plus 11. And that turns out to be 18. So that's using geometry because I'm using this formula here, although I use a little bit different formula. But so this one has some positive and some negative because two, three, four, five, six. If I start down here at negative six, rise two and run one. Here's the line, but I can see that at one, I've got some negative area, and then at six, I think I'm going to have some positive area. So this is where, let's find out, f at 1 is negative 4, and then f at 6 is 6, and I'm doing that just by plugging in, right? 6 just goes 2 times 6 minus 6 is this 6. Um, and then so it's still, uh, well, let's let's do it. It's, there's, a, there's two triangles here. There's a blue triangle down here, and the area of a triangle is a, uh, one half base times height plus uh, the area of the next triangle, which which would be well from here to here. So I've got a blue triangle and then a pink triangle, which is also one half base times height. So the first triangle has a base of two, the height of four plus one half three times the six. Again, showing or demonstrating using geometry. So this area I'm going to call negative 4 because, well, I don't know what you want to call negative. Probably this length down here because it's going down um, is usually a negative length. But, but we know that that blue area is negative because it's below the axis. Oops, that didn't work. Uh, that is negative area. Um, and then this other area, this pink area, is going to be positive. So that's why I think the answer, we'll see if the author agrees. I think the answer is going to be five. Um, a little confusing because they said use geometry, and I am demonstrating geometry. I'm not, uh, if I didn't use geometry, then I, I'll show you in section uh, 5.3 how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and do the f of 6 minus f of 1 and just simply integrate this thing. Uh, but we're, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be using geometry formulas to do this. So, again, it's not the answer I'm going after. Uh, demonstrate some, some knowledge. So I'm going to get rid of this chart just so I have a little bit of space to write. I think if you were to graph this guy, it would be a semicircle between 2 and 4. And I want to integrate from 3 to 4. So I really want to find the area of just this, which is 1 fourth of the circle and the area of a circle is pi r squared so again using geometry looks like the radius is just one and my answer is one fourth pi so i did not use calculus i'm demonstrating that i can find area using geometry formulas oh good the author got a five two so they must have used uh, negative as well even though they say geometry all right, so example number four, we're integrating uh, from A to B, and it looks like that's just an area of 12. But if I integrate from B to C, that's going to be negative 10 because it's below the axis. And from A to C would be a sum uh, of 12 minus 10, positive and negative area. And then the last one from B to D would be negative 10 plus 8 or the area of negative 2. And there's the author's answers. Again, just some things that you can do. Uh, this doesn't look very important, but populot.constant will be something of use that we'll look at here. Um, for this one, um, why don't we just go ahead and pop out that constant? We didn't learn that you could do that. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 7, which is showing as negative 10. So 2 times negative 10 is negative and so it's just a negative. You could just pause the video here and see if you can finish the job. This one's backward, 
see that I'm going um, high to low, so I would pull out a negative and go from 0 to 5 of this function, and then say the answer is negative 3. And looks like this one's backwards, so I would want to pull out maybe a negative 6 and integrate from 0 to 7. So when I pop out the 6, I'm also going to pop out a negative uh, because it looks like I'm integrating backwards. So this would be negative 6 times the negative 10. Um, at, which is 60. And the last one, I'm not really sure. Um, all I know is it's greater than or equal to 10. Let's see what the odd. I don't, I don't think you can do anything with this because they're not really given. What does the author say here? Okay, so all we know that it's greater than or equal to 10. The integral cannot be evaluated without knowing. Yep. So example number six is kind of the meat and the potatoes of this. Um, evaluating using Riemann sum, which we learned in section 5.1, but now we're going to take this to infinity, and we're going to use those definitions that I will provide in the IP sheet, um, which include the delta x, which we use Riemann for over and over. That we've memorized and we'll use it each week, but I'll give it to you. And x star for the right. We're going to push this to infinity. So we're going to get the exact area underneath the curve. So it doesn't really matter if you use left, right, or midpoint. You'll get the same answer, uh, the same exact answer. But the right is the easiest x star to use. So we're going to go back to the sum of f of x star uh, times delta x. And here's your first look at maybe where you're really going to be popping out that delta x. Maybe the book doesn't work it out that way, but this is just a concept. And my recommendation is you just pop that out. So let's go find delta x by doing uh, b minus a. So here's your integral always from a to b. So a equals 0, b equals 2. That's going to be 2 minus 0 over, and we don't know what n is. So that's my delta x, and that's what just popped out. So I'm popping out 2 over n. And then a is a 0, so I won't write that down. Uh, 0 plus k times, um, well, let's just write it down, f of um, x star. So 0, which I won't write, and then k times 2 over n, which, of course, that says go to the function and plug in a 2k over n. So the function is right here. So this is going to be uh, 2 over n, the sum of 2k over n gets cubed, and then I add 1. So that's what the function says. So I have to add all this up, um, and then, of course, I've got the limit going to infinity, infinite many rectangles again. So here's where we're going to use those other pieces of information from the formula sheet. Um, 2 over n, the sum of, let's just distribute this to every term. So it's 8k cubed over n cubed uh, plus 1. So notice that I have created some more constants because uh, 8 is a constant. N cubed, just like you pulled, popped out 2 over. So I'm going to keep the 2 over N popped out here. I'm going to say it's the sum, that's not how you write the sigma, 2 over N, and then the sum, which I don't think you can get a little bit fancier than I do. The sum of, I'm going to pop the 8 over N cubed here uh, times K cubed. No. Um, let me let me pop this guy out there so I, I can just see and then it's this plus the sum of one. So two over n, eight over n cubed. I don't want to multiply those because then it will affect that and it shouldn't. This eight over n cubed only affects this k cubed, not the one. So but I do have the sum of k cubed and I've got a nice definition the sum of k cubed. So use your formula sheet for that, which again, I'm going to provide you on your test. You don't have to have this memorized. But that sum of k cubed 
Um, I should probably show you this one because we had uh, of black just by now. Eight over n cubed, two over n times, and then the sum of a constant would just be c n, but the, the c being the constant one, one times n is just n. So it looks like I can do some simplifying here. Uh, I've got a, just an n in the denominator. And there's many, many, many correct ways to work this. You might not have done that, but I'm going to choose, uh, well, let's get rid of this a and this or and this a too. So I just have an n in the denominator, and I'll, I'll create an n over here by multiplying, I don't know if it's confusing or not, by multiplying by n over n uh, just to get a common denominator. So my common denominator is n that I just created. I have this 2 hanging around here. This is all gone. And this is what? n squared plus 2n plus 1 with a cube of that 2 and bring down a 2n squared plus 4n plus 2. And then this is plus another n squared. I'm not really canceling that. I created those green. I, I, I created these blue n's so that I could have that common denominator. So this n squared gets combined with this n squared, and I end up with three n squared plus four n plus two over n. Now remember, you still have this two over n hanging out here. And you still have to evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity. So, oh, too many. So, let's go ahead and multiply that up and see what we get. I'm going to evaluate the limit. That doesn't look like the limit as n goes to infinity of 6n squared plus 8n plus 4 all over. My pen's going wacko. n squared. And if you remember, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then you just check out the coefficients out front, which is 6 over 1. And so this exact area underneath the curve is 6 units, whatever the units were. So you'll need to demonstrate all of that. Let's see. The author, yeah, they did pull out that uh, delta x, which sometimes they don't do. They did it a little bit differently. They left that plus 2. They didn't find the common denominator because I multiplied by n over n. Find the common denominator. They did not do that, interestingly enough. So you can pause it and look at how they worked it out, but they still got a 6. Interesting. So one last example. Uh, I'll try to – I know the video is getting long, but um, there's plenty of good examples in here. Always start with finding delta x, b minus 0. N and your x star. And it says do this with your right. So x star um, is always defined as the a plus k times delta x. And it's nice when a is 0 because that really cleans things up. Go find delta x first um, by doing the b minus a over n. And then plug that in over here. And look at that. 2k over n, once again, gets plugged into the function. So when you do sum of f of x star times delta x. You can pop out that delta x. 2 over, this is very similar to the problem in this case. We just got some working. f of 2k over n. Just this time you're plugging this into here. So 2 over n, the sum of 2 times 2k over n uh, plus one. And then you, uh, I don't know how far I should go. Um, I want you to keep watching the video, but I don't want you to be bored to death. So here's kind of the tricky part. Um, you could just say, instead of saying the sum of A plus B, I could say the sum of A plus the sum of B. Um, but here's the tricky part. This, this 4 over N only gets popped out that far. Uh, don't pop it all the way out because it doesn't affect that one. So if you're going to make a mistake, that might be where it's at. 4 over n, the sum of k is a formula, and the sum of 1, we use the last formula. So the sum of k 
you would use that heat sheet as that N N plus one over two. Um, and then this two over N gets applied to everything, but the four over N just gets applied to this first one. And then this is just the sum of N. So again, you have to make some decisions whether you want, I would cancel those ends. Okay. Uh, I would cancel this and just get a two. It looks like the denominator's gone. Yeah, so this is going to turn out nice. So it's going to get nervous, and I'm not going to get the final answer. But I think, let's see, this is 2n plus 2 plus another n. I have that 2 over n out front. So this is 3n plus 2, uh, 2 over n, which is 6n plus 4 over n. And the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, and I get 6. Yeah, yeah, that's the correct answer. Yay, there's the author working it out. Here's another example I would encourage you to pause the video, see if you can't work it out, and here's the worked out solution. The final answer is 18. Good luck on this section. It's a lot of work. I know there's easier ways to find these solutions because you can just pick up a calculator and type it in. If you don't know how to do that, I'll show you real quick so we're all in the same playing field, but I won't give you any credit for doing this on a test if you if you – you do this, but it's a good way to check your answer. Just hit uh, Math 9 if you have a TI-84. Hopefully you don't have an 83, because you can't do that on an 83. And fill in, <laughs> you fill in the boxes. I mean, it's basically brain dead. Um, but again, that's why I'm not going to give you any credit for coming up with answer 18, uh, unless you demonstrate your content knowledge of going through this Riemann sums. So, good luck.